I decided to make a break here at the Traders Hotel, which is the place to be if you're close to the gender. You can find here high-class prostitution, and also, of course, you can read this. First, it's filled with propaganda ads explaining how to behave, how to be a good, obedient, and disciplined citizen. The only articles with a little bit of content are almost all about public works or industrial machines, or about ribbon cutting ceremonies at public buildings or bridges that they love. You also find weird reports of official speeches given by the generals, reports that somehow manage to avoid talking about the content of the speech, all the while telling us that the audience really enjoyed it. As for the international news, it's a complete caricature. The newspaper copies articles from the internet without ever giving the source. And finally, when the newspaper mentions the US or the UK, it's always in a grotesque way. Like here, for example, with this story about a vulture invasion in Florida. And we don't really see anyone who would support this daily, especially not the Burmese. They use it to clean their windows. <laughs> Okay, we finally uh, found a uh, internet connection here in the hall of this hotel, and we're going to try and check our email for a start. The, the mail access has been denied. Maybe another one. Let's try maybe Hotmail. Access has been denied. Okay, let's try maybe uh, just for general information, like a uh, international AFP, AP, or Reuters, for example. Reuters. Let's try that. Okay. Access has been denied. Okay, well, it's not here that we'll manage to get a good connection on the internet or check our emails. We'll try somewhere else, maybe in Rangoon, with a bit of luck. Hello? Excuse me. Look, we're looking for uh, internet with email. Internet. Internet over there? Yes, yes. Yeah, the, yes. Build, the big building. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, can I use uh, Gmail? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Because we try everywhere, it doesn't work. Here, here it works. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. So let's give it a try. Okay. Okay, now you must be quite patient. Like, very patient. Extremely patient. It seems you can actually access your Gmail account. The only problem is that it's not a secure connection and that the regime can actually read your emails. One last thing, once you've finished with internet, you have to give your address, your name, and your passport number. Welcome to Freedom Country. Here I'm in front of a field, a traditional field that you can see in the region. And you can see that part of it is dedicated to this small little tree behind me. That's called the Kietsu. And here you can actually see uh, 
the fruit that's supposed to be used in the production of the biodiesel. That's Kitsu. Yeah. Kitsu here. Kitsu. Yes, All that is Kitsu. Yes, he cannot product the biodiesel from the Czech fruit because he has a no machine, no alcohol, no uh, protection, you know, no to instrument. I understand. Right is more better for people. Yeah. You know, the Kitsu is also forced by the government to must be plant the, this plantation. So the government, government by force. obliged by yeah, force yes. to do Kiatsu. Yes, yes. yeah. Well, thank you very much and uh, good luck. OK, we're going to try and uh, go in here, but uh, I'm not quite sure about it. Ministry of Agriculture. I can't believe we're inside. The craziest thing is that we've managed to convince them that we were professionals fascinated by biodiesel. We managed to come here and visit the process that you need to go through if you want to create biodiesel from Kiatsu. You add that into this. So to sum up, the process is highly complex and very expensive. $9,000 for the conversion kit. A Burmese farmer just can't afford it. Locals even plant Ketsu in the center of the city. Ketsu. The regime believes it's a way to neutralize the opponent Aung San Suu Kyi, because Suu Kyi and Ketsu are opposites. Ketsu, Suu Kyi. That's opium pipe. Like this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. You can you can you can lie? Yeah. On the, on the mat. You have to lie, because if you don't lie you fall. <laughs> when you come to Burma, you can very easily buy an opium pipe or an opium weight like this one. But what you must know is that the country is actually the second producer of opium in the world after Afghanistan. What's quite funny is that on one hand the regime actually benefits of this traffic. And on the other hand, it's actually created a huge museum, a fight against the drug. If we go by the museum's records, we are the first visitors in ages. Yet there are thousands of square meters on three levels that are sitting empty, just waiting for visitors. At the same time, you can't really tell who this circus is meant for. So we're here and I'm absolutely alone. There's nobody in this three-store building entirely dedicated to the fight against the drug. If you think that Yangon is the capital of Burma, you're wrong. It's Naypyidaw, a new city created by the Genta, about 200 miles north from here. And to link those two cities, they created a huge highway that we're going to try and take now. On the 6th of November 2005, at 6.37 in the morning, they decided to transfer the capital from Yangon to Naypyidaw. Thousands of civil servants were obliged to go to Naypyidaw. As for the population, it learned the transfer only two months later.
Okay, from here on, no tourists are allowed. Only uh, businessmen and officials can come through. So from here on, we'll try and keep a low profile uh, because we don't want to get arrested. Lepido means city of the kings. Simple and humble as usual. There is no downtown here that would be too dangerous. The capital was built in zones. A zone for luxury hotels, another for malls. There's also a zone for the civil servants' houses and high security zones, such as ministries. Here, the Ministry of Information. And here, the police ministry and a bit further, the military zone, with their army camp, a highly protected zone, but we're not gonna stick around here because it's too risky. You should know that half of the regime's 400,000 soldiers are stationed here in the new capital. And Burma is simply the biggest army in the region, after China, of course. Naypyidaw is also a little paradise for the regime's bureaucrats. Drinking water, electricity round the clock. The city is like a giant VIP space surrounded by 200,000 armed bouncers. And inside, it's first class, all the way. So here we're in the middle of the, the capital and we found this, uh, this golf here, this golf practice. And there's just absolutely nobody. There must be a huge, economic failure, this place. Well, let's give it a try, anyway. Yes, wonderful. This place in the middle of nowhere looks like a, a fake city. There's just nobody. You have all the services you can imagine, but nobody to use them. Except me. Living in Burma today is a bit like if someone made you watch a really bad movie in a gigantic open-air prison. The regime has staged a grotesque play on a countrywide scale, a show in which the Burmese are both the main audience and the primary victims. A huge masquerade that's been dragging on for half a century. Yeah. 